Hey everybody, preparing for emergencies doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be expensive. If you are on a limited budget, you will be happy to know that there are 25 really important things that you can do right now that are completely free in order to prepare you, your family, and your home for emergencies. So let's go ahead and get to the list. Number one is going to be condiments and spices. A lot of times if you are eating in fast food restaurants, having takeout delivered, um, all kinds of situations, even if you're going to like a church picnic or something, there might be excess packets of condiments, of salt, pepper, spices, even handy wipes, things like that. Just don't throw those away. Um, go ahead and keep those bring them back home and put them in a zip top bag. Now I have been accumulating these over years and years and they don't have expiration dates written on each individual pack, which can be a problem. So if you are going to be accumulating a lot of things, put those in bags and you might want to jot down the date of when you actually got it, just so you have a general idea of when you got that ketchup packet that if it was six months ago or if it was six years ago in all honesty now condiments are so important because if you were in an emergency situation and you were eating some foods that weren't as flavorful or as um tasty as you might want them to be you can always jazz it up with ketchup or the barbecue sauces um there's even like salad dressing packets and things like that and they're shelf stable so they don't have to be refrigerated now, number two is going to be candies, just kind of like condiments and spices. There are opportunities where you find hard candies um, and people are giving them out like at doctor's offices is really kind of where I see this a lot. Um, even like I've had bookstores and places where you check out. If there are hard candies like peppermints or butterscotches and things like that, those are great to go ahead and put away in a jar or a plastic bag and keep those. Because in an emergency, everybody wants some comfort food and generally comfort food usually is sweet. So have those set aside and um, those are gonna keep much better than like chocolate bars. Number three is going to be disposable cutlery. If you were in a situation and you had no water, you're not going to be able to wash your forks and knives and spoons and everything that you need to eat on a daily basis. And that is going to get quite disgusting and nasty pretty quickly. So if you have the opportunity to gather disposable cutlery, as well as plates and cups and bowls and anything like that and napkins, uh, go ahead and do that. A lot of the times uh, if you get like takeout delivery or takeout food um, if you eat at fast food restaurant they put in disposable cutlery in those containers and bags that you have uh, so you can just start stockpiling that especially if you're having like takeout delivered to your home and they give you disposable cutlery why would you use it use the stuff that you have at home and save that for a rainy day when you might need it because there is no water Number four is going to be coupons and money saving apps. Now, a lot of times you can actually use coupons, stack them with a sale, end up getting something for free. There might be buy one, get one offers. If you were gonna be buying something at full price anyway, well then if you do the buy one, get one free, that second one is actually free, right? Um, there are money saving apps like Ibotta and that rewards you with cash back for shopping at places that you're already shopping and every now and then there's like a freebie for a free drink or a free toothpaste or something like that. So just use all of these avenues that gift you free things to try, even if it's like samples through a manufacturer, those could also be stored away if it is non-perishable items too. All right, number five is gonna to be to start saving seeds. If you are a gardener, you might already be doing this, but if you're not, did you know that you can save seeds from the things that you are growing this year, the edibles that you are growing, and you can use those seeds next year. And that way you don't have to buy any seeds. You are also guaranteed that you have the seeds on hand because there have been seed shortages the past few years. Now just be sure that this is a non-GMO seed that you are using. That is because non-genetically modified seeds 
are actually able to be propagated over and over again. You can plant those and they will produce crops. Number six is gonna to be to utilize plant exchanges. A lot of times garden clubs, um, community events, all kinds of places will have like plant swaps, plant exchanges. You might take something that you have, a plant, and you can propagate it, you can have cuttings or maybe divide them, and you can swap with somebody else that might have edibles that you can use. So this is a great way to get plants for your garden um, that produce fruit, that produce vegetables, I don't know, maybe nuts, anything that you need, and you can just take what you have and swap it out with something that somebody else has. Number seven is gonna be medical supplies you would be surprised to find out that there are places that will give you free medical supplies that are great in an emergency. Things like band-aids, uh, masks, even if you're not wearing a mask right now, these are things that are important to have if there was to be wildfires, if there was to be another contagion, um, if you were in a place with like ash raining down, you want to have a mask that can filter that stuff out. So in the current situation, if people are giving away masks, go ahead and take them. Um, there's like health departments that actually will give out free supplies just so you have emergency preps at home. These are things that might be like band-aids, um, ointments, gauze, Everybody's going to be different. Your county health department or city health department is going to be different than anybody else's. So you really need to see what's available to you. Health fairs are another fabulous place to get these starter emergency kit basics. Um, a lot of times I have been given out like tiny little first aid kits that has all kinds of different items in there just like as giveaways and freebies if you go to people's booths. So if you have health clinics, um, health fairs in your area, go ahead to those and see what they might be giving out. You could contact your local hospital. They might have uh, options for the community. Um, always just keep keep uh, kind of your ear to the wall to see what might be out there. I once got a, an offer for a free first aid kit just because there was a new medical provider coming into the area that was offering first aid kits. So you never know what is available in your community. Number eight is gonna be any type of container, storage container. This can be um, plastic, it can be glass, it can be tin, whatever you can use to store the things that you need. Now, generally you wanna be able to store food or water, um, but you might also have like other supplies like screwdriver or screws and nails and things that you are accumulating over the course of time that also work great in an emergency. You don't necessarily have to buy a lot of expensive uh, storage containers in order to keep your food and water available and in your emergency supply kit. Number nine is gonna be store water. You can use containers that you have at home, such as old laundry detergent bottles that are cleaned and emptied out, and you can put water in there, keep that stashed away in your emergency pantry. This can be used for your toilets, it can be used to wash clothes if you need to, or dishes um, if you prepare it uh, safely. This can be potable water. You just need to have water on hand and you can do it with containers that you already own. Number 10 is going to be buckets. A lot of times you need to buy a five gallon bucket and those are great for storing food, uh, making like an emergency uh, toilet and all kinds of things. Sometimes you can get these buckets for free. I have heard of restaurants and bakeries giving away these buckets for free because a lot of their supplies come in them and they can't use that many buckets. So it's something that you're gonna need to contact uh, individual restaurants, bakeries, businesses about that. But if you can get them for free, they are great for storing items. Number 11 is going to be ask for gifts. If people are buying you presents for whatever holiday, um, birthdays, any time of the year, and they honestly ask you, what would you like? 
don't say, oh, I don't need anything or whatever. Have a list. <laughs> and if you don't want them to know that you're a prepper, then you can make it something that is not going to alert them to the fact that you're using it for preps. You could ask for a gift card to a grocery store in which you are going to be getting food to stash away or a home improvement store. Nobody's going to think twice about that, but you might be using that gift card in order to buy seeds and gardening supplies. Uh, if there's a specific book that you want to have in your library, if you want an indoor growing kit, um, you know, extra clothes or something. Honestly, if you have people in your life that want to buy you presents and they ask you what you want, have a running list and tell them because they want to know and you want the stuff and you are essentially getting it for free. Number 12 is going to be to start keeping things that you would normally be donating. A lot of times we're going through clothing that doesn't fit because we've gotten too big um, or is just out of style, things like that. What you actually want to do is keep that stuff in case you are in a situation where you can no longer buy clothing or you're losing weight because you're working out so hard and you need pants that fit and the big ones are going to be too hard to keep up on your waist with a belt and you wish you had had the pants that you had grown out of like a year or two ago. Um, shoes are really important to have on hand so don't get rid of any that are in really I want to say they have to be in great condition but decent enough without like you know holes in them and falling apart. Socks, just like any clothing item, you also want to restart, uh, rethink some of the household items that you might be donating. Can they be repurposed in another way or can they be used possibly down the road if you need them in an emergency situation, especially if there was no power or no water? So just rethink all of the donation items that you would be uh, normally giving away. Number 13 is going to be gather wood. If you have tree branches and twigs that are falling down from trees um, in a storm and you're gathering those on your property, if somebody in your area or in your yard is having a tree cut down um, or removing limbs, always ask if you can keep wood from that removal and uh, either cut it yourself or have somebody cut it for you in order to have firewood. Even if you don't have a fireplace or a fire pit, um, you do need to keep wood if you have the ability to burn things outside. If you are like in a condo situation and you don't have a yard and all you have is like an enclosed patio, probably not going to be the best prep for you in all honesty. But if you have the ability to have a fire outside in order to heat food, um, if you needed firewood for inside to heat your home, um, even if you have like a DIY rocket stove, like if you don't have a fire pit or anything that you think that you can cook food on, you can make um, a emergency rocket stove with like cinder blocks, but you are going to need something to burn. So just be sure to uh, keep as many twigs, branches, limbs, and cut firewood as you can. Number 14 is going to be cardboard. Cardboard can actually be used as a um, material in order to make a fire outside, in order to cook food. Large pieces of cardboard can actually be put in windows and doors and other places in order to block um, cold air coming in um, or in order to block sunlight. You might be in a situation where you don't want people to see that you have lights on inside or that you are cooking inside. And if you don't have blackout curtains, which are also a great prep, but they're not free, you might want cardboard so that you can put it in and block what the light and whatever is going on inside from people outside knowing what you are doing. Now, number 15 is going to be bubble wrap. If you are getting packages that do have bubble wrap, bubble wrap is a great insulator for your windows and doors. Um, in the winter time, you can put it up and you can actually keep more heat and make it a little bit warmer inside if you put that up because of the insulation, uh, insulating properties of the, all those little bubbles and the air in there. Um, you could just 
like you apply it to the window just with water and stick it on, but it actually does make a difference in helping to regulate the temperature inside. This is great if you have winter weather and you might need a little bit of extra help of staying warm if the power was out. Number 16 is going to be save all of your old towels and sheets. These are things that you might end up throwing away or donating because they are tattered, um, they're starting to fray, or maybe not as plush as you would like. These are great in order to be using as rags. You might need to stuff them underneath doors in order to keep water coming through or cold air or whatever. Um, they are great. You never know like if there's water intrusion, you might need help in cleaning up that water and a few paper towels isn't going to do it. You need something really big. They can actually double as extra insulation um, and bedding. If you are without power in the winter time, every single layer is going to matter. It can be pet bedding. So don't give up these huge pieces of textile and fabric because uh, they can be used in a lot of different ways. You can even hang old sheets up in a doorway to prevent um, cold air from coming into a room. You can make a makeshift tent with them inside or outside with a large sheet. So don't give up uh, sheets or towels. Number 17 is keep the materials to make fire starters. Toilet paper tubes and dryer lint are great for making fire starters. And we all got those things and can easily make fire starters. So you might wanna keep the lint in like a Ziploc bag just to keep it from going elsewhere. Have a, a bag of toilet paper tubes. These are really important if you need to be starting the fire outside or indoors for heat and warmth. Number 18 is going to be use Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. You would be surprised at the things that people are giving away for free that you can get if you are willing to go pick them up. A lot of times people get into situations where they don't want to deal with having to sell or come up with a price um, to have people be coming and buying their things or they're moving and they have to get rid of the items because there is nowhere to put them and they've got to leave. So in these cases, you might find a lot of great things that are great for prepping um, that you can get absolutely free. Number 19 is going to be paper maps. GPS is not going to work if you don't have power or if the grid is down. Um, I mean, it might work as long as you have a battery life, but seriously, if you've got to evacuate and the grid is overloaded, either because it's A, down, or B, everybody around you is also trying to find an evacuation route and everybody's like on the internet trying to call people and look up things, you are gonna need to know how to navigate roads. And you might think that you know everything about your area and you're fine, whatever, you might. But in a time of emergency situation, you might not think clearly as far as thinking through those routes on back roads that might be less congested. You might find yourself needing to leave and go to higher ground or to a place that you are not familiar with. So if you can get paper maps, a lot of times convention and visitor bureaus will give these to you for free. State tourism agencies will give them to you for free, whether you pick them up in welcome centers or sometimes they will mail them. Wherever you can get the maps that are in your general area. If you are in Florida, you don't need the Alaska map in all honesty, but maybe you need Georgia and Alabama. Things that are local to you, like if you're escaping a hurricane, you're in Florida, you need to know where you can go. And if you keep driving and there's no hotels along the way, then yeah, this is something that you need to know to where the next big town is gonna be because GPS is not working on your phone. So just be sure to invest in some great maps of the region where you live. Number 20 is gonna be a source of entertainment. If the power is down, you're not gonna be watching Netflix and your kids are not gonna be gaming and there's gonna be some boredom and probably a whole lot of crankiness going on pretty soon. So you need to have things that'll keep the family or keep you entertained without 
being bored, without going crazy. These are things like books, um, puzzle books. There might be puzzles. Um, you can have board games. If you have crafting supplies, knitting or crocheting, whatever it is that you need, just be sure to keep those in your home. Now, as far as them being free, a lot of times people get rid of these. I know a lot of people always get rid of board games when their kids have grown up. Um, books from the library, I've seen like stacks of free books or books that other people are giving away. So just be aware if people are giving away non-tech entertainment options, store those away for with for your emergency prep situation if the power was to go out. Number 21 is to glean food. If you have never heard of the process of gleaning, that is when people have fruit trees or um, vegetable growing plants, and there's just so much that it ends up going to waste because nobody uses um, this produce. This could be as simple as like an orange tree that is growing on vacant property and it's dropping the oranges and they're perfectly great. And um, you can actually get them because the owner is okay with people picking up food on that property. It could be asking your neighbors if they have excess and they can't use it. However, you glean the food that would otherwise be going to waste. You can then use this stuff and you can dehydrate it, you can can it, you can freeze dry it, whatever food preservation method you have, go ahead and do that, add it to your prepper pantry. Number 22 is going to be make ice packs. Ice packs are great because they allow your freezer to keep food longer. So if you have a freezer right now that is only half full, if you make some ice packs, you can actually uh, fill in that available space. And if the power was to go out, everything in your freezer would stay colder a lot longer because there wouldn't be um, all the air that's gonna get warm fast. Just to make an ice pack, put water in a zip top bag and seal it. If you don't have a zip top bag, put water in a container in which liquid can expand easily and safely as it freezes. Um, and use those as kind of like pseudo ice packs. Uh, just be really careful. You don't want to put water all the way up to the top of a container because as water freezes and becomes ice, it expands. And so you don't want any issues with that. But uh, if the power was to go out after you are done, like after that freezer does warm up and you're not able to use it in a freezing capacity anymore, all the water that is going to be in those homemade ice packs can be then used as non-potable water for the toilet again, for washing clothes or dishes or anything that you need. Number 23 is to take classes and get information. Information is so readily available right now of everything that you need. Um, whether or not you go to the library and you get some how-to books, you watch YouTube for videos of how to learn a new skill whether it is like a specialized online class that somebody is teaching for self-defense or any other topic that you might need, get the information that you need and learn it. Because in a true emergency situation, you might not be able to hop online and figure out what it is that you need to do. Even something as basic as how to make I don't know, like a quick and easy bread, like a recipe. If you are somebody that is constantly going to the internet and your phone or an app in order to know how to cook something, go ahead and figure that out. Even if you write down the recipes, if you print them out, whatever it is that you need to do, um, just so you have the ability to be able to cook from basic necessities or basic ingredients in order to provide food for your family. Because in addition to the recipes, I mean, there's just so many skills that you need. Sewing, how to fix a toilet. Um, I, I mean, there's just so many things that you can learn right now. Take advantage of the books and the resources and the videos and the classes that you can do right now. Number 24 is going to be harvesting rainwater. This is a little different than storing water that we've already talked about. You just want to be sure that you are 
able to store rainwater if you needed to, if you did not have running water and you went through all the water that you've already stored in your home. Now, this could be like looking at ways that you can harvest the water outside, being sure that you have enough containers in which you can do that. Doesn't necessarily have to be a rain barrel. I've seen people like on boats that just have rubber made, uh, plastic buckets that they just literally put outside and harvest water as it comes down. Do you have buckets like that? Um, do you have five gallon buckets that would collect water? You know, again, going back to what we've already talked about, you might not think you need five gallon buckets for food storage, but you sure might need them for rainwater harvesting. In the past, I've also seen some communities give out rain barrels in order to have uh, residents be collecting rainwater to kind of ease the uh, need to have the you know watering for their garden. I haven't seen this as much, but be sure to check your community, your city, your local government. There's a possibility that they might be giving out rain barrels or rainwater uh, collection systems. In that case, take them up on it because you need water. You need, need, need water more than you need emergency food. So look for all opportunities right now in which you are able to harvest rainwater should you need to. And number 25 is going to be start getting all of your important documents together and make copies. You cannot rely on your insurance policies being able to be referred to if they are only online. Um, don't even think that your insurance companies are going to be able to say, hey, yeah, we found your policy if you can't find it online. So you need documentation. This might be birth certificates. It could be insurance policies, um, phone numbers and addresses of the people that you know and love and might need to contact. You think you know them in your head, but if you're not doing it every day, you might not. In an emergency situation with like quick response like this, you might kind of forget what your phone number is. How many of us actually don't even know the phone numbers of like our husband or wife or mother because it's just a rapid dial on your phone contact list. And if you actually had to push it in onto like a phone that wasn't connected to your contacts, do you know their phone number? Do you know their physical address? These are things that you really need to know. Write down your banking account numbers and routing information. All of that information. Uh, I said birth certificates, marriage licenses. Uh, that would be great to have as well. Immunization records, medical records that are gonna be really helpful if you have a certain situation. Um, just anything like bank account numbers and passwords, all of that stuff. Don't take for granted that it's always gonna be digitally available and don't take for granted that if you go to these places, that they will be able to pull up your information. Like it just might not happen. So you need paper copies of all of this and then you need to put those paper copies someplace safe. Put all that paper in a zip top plastic bag so that it cannot be um, smeared and damaged because of water. If there was flooding or water intrusion, rainwater, uh, you know, whatever the case might be, just go ahead and store it safely that way. Okay, I know I said there was going to be 25, but I thought of two more. So these are bonus. <laughs> these are bonus tips. So number 26 is going to be keep all the plastic sheeting that you can find. The large plastic bags that might come with items that you buy. All of these really large pieces of plastic are great as mini tarps. Um, they're not going to be obviously as thick and indestructible as some of the big tarps that you can get at home improvement stores. However, they really can help keep water off of things. Uh, you can also use them in a pinch in windows and doors in order to keep wind and water from coming in. And then finally, number 27 is compost. If you don't know how to compost already, definitely learn part of like one of those classes that I was telling you about. You can turn food scraps, food waste 
and yard waste into really rich organic soil. And you're gonna need that if you intend on gardening. Even if you are doing raised beds, gardening in the ground, gardening in pots and container gardens, that rich organic soil is gonna be so good, especially if you're in a situation where you can't get fertilizer or you can't go and buy soil um, or the cost is just prohibitive. So that's a great idea as well. So these are 27 great ideas in order to have free prepping supplies that are gonna help you out in all kinds of emergencies. I'm sure there's gonna be more that other people can think of. I would really appreciate it if you put those in the comments below so that viewers can see even more ideas that you might have. If you are new to my channel, I would love it if you subscribed. And please do share this information with anybody that you think could really benefit from it um, on Facebook groups or just with friends and family because I love to spread the knowledge that it doesn't have to be hard in order to be prepared for emergencies. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.